So a few months back, uh, I made my very first video actually, which was how to make a train station. So uh, I kind of forgot that I said that I was gonna show how I made the train. So in this video, I'm gonna go into how I make uh, train cars. And these ones I have been working on for months and months. Uh, so uh, just as a little kind of warning in this, before I start, uh, we're not gonna make a train that's to this level. It's gonna be much more basic, but I'm gonna basically show you how you can make a train that is to this level. and. Um, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so uh, starting out, um, we have our basic cube, and I'm going to start with making the wheels. Um, so I'm going to import this picture of wheels that I downloaded off Google Images. I'm going to line up this image so I can see it from the x-axis, and then once I've got that to where I want it, I'm going to tab into the edit mode for the cube, and I'm going to add in two loop cuts like this so that it's kind of quartered off. And I'm going to select all but one of these chunks. And I'm going to delete all these faces. And then I'm going to go to the modifiers tab and add in a mirror modifier and check X and Y. So now all we have to do is just edit part of the cube into a wheel shape. So I'm going to start and I'm going to uh, make so I can see everything here and I'm going to start kind of modeling out the basic structure of the uh, the I don't know what the thing is called that holds the wheels in place but I think you can see what I'm doing so um, and you might have to position your uh, reference just a bit more so that you can um, better see what you're doing but once you get it to where you are uh, it's just a lot of dragging and extrusion and um, you might have to switch between the different um, editor modes, whether it be uh, vertex, edge, or uh, face, so that you can select everything. So um, once I kind of got the bare bones down, I'm going to keep extruding out and filling out the rest of this wheel holder here. I would go more into this part of making the wheel, but it's basically uh, it's a technique I learned from an Ian Hubert tutorial, so I don't want to copy it too closely because that would just be sad and wrong. So um, I'm going to just go kind of quickly through this part, but yeah, this is basically how you can make some good wheels. Now I'm going to select the knife tool and I'm going to just cut out some of the geometry uh, from the image here so that we can have some of the holes and uh, places that are on this uh, wheel holder thing here. Um, I'm going to uh, delete the face and um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do the same thing for over here where all the springs are. So again, I'm just gonna cut it out and then I'm gonna delete it. Okay, so this is obviously not to scale, but uh, you can fix that later on your own if you want. Anyways, uh, just delete any unwanted geometry, and I'm going to fill out these holes a little bit more by selecting the inside faces and pressing E to extrude and just pulling them back. Okay, so I think next I'm going to add in a wheel. So you can do that by just in edit mode, you can press Shift A to add an object, add in a cylinder, and just rotate it around. And uh, you can just line it up uh, with your uh, where the wheel would go in the real uh, image here. So once you got that kind of positioned right and scaled right, uh, you can look and see how thick they are. These are way too thick, so I'm going to scale them in a little bit. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to select this face here and pull it out just a tiny bit. And I'm going to press I to inset, and then I'm going to, uh, let's see, make sure everything can fit here. And I'm going to extrude this forward and inset it and extrude it forward a little bit. I'm going to sort of do the same for the back here. I'm going to press I to inset, then extrude it out, then inset again, extrude it out. And to stop these geometry from intersecting, I'm going to go back to the modifiers tab and check uh, clipping. So now it can't clip through itself. Okay. Um... I'm going to give these wheels just a little bit more detail, so I'm going to add in some edge loops and um, I'm going to create kind of a taper on them. So uh, that way I can select these edges and just bring them in just a little bit here so that the wheel kind of uh, slopes outward. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to add in some of these springs. So um, I'm going to uh, duplicate over this uh, circle here. <laughs> and I'm going to rotate it, oops, rotate it uh, 90 degrees on the Y, 
and um, I'm going to drag it down and position it sort of in this opening here um, so that way I can make some springs. Okay, so uh, once you get that positioned where you want it, uh, basically just get it to the scale you want and then you can uh, extrude it up. I think I'm going to make a third spring a little later. Um, I'm not sure though, so we'll see. Um, you might have to uh, scale it out a little bit too by pressing uh, S Shift Z to uh, scale along the X and Y. I'm going to select some of the geometry from here under the spring and I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Shift D and bring it up here. And I'm going to use this to kind of create the top of the spring box. And I'm going to slide it out a little bit and I'm going to uh, extrude the whole thing up just a little bit. Like there, that looks good. Okay, um, I'm going to just add in a few more things and I'm going to start texturing. So I'm going to select this top edge here. I'm going to press E to extrude and drag it out to kind of create a top. And then I'm going to uh, select this face, press E again and drag this down so that there's a bit more uh, depth to it. And um, I'm going to create kind of a connecting piece here, I think. So I'm going to select this uh, spring, press Shift D to duplicate, bring it up and position it so it's grounded and I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to make it a bit wider. When that looks good I'm going to hop into the shader editor and I'm going to make a new material and I'm going to throw in that image of the train wheels and I'm going to plug that into the base color. I'm going to tab into edit mode, A to select everything, U to unwrap and project from view and then I'm going to go over into the UV editor and um, I'm going to select this uh, wheel holder first and scale it up to the appropriate size and just kind of line it up with the geometry here. And uh, you might have to move some stuff around manually, but that looks pretty good for right now anyways. I'm going to select the spring and I'm going to scale it up to the right size and position it on the real spring. And um, let's see, I'm going to select the uh, box here and I'm going to again put it where it would be in the real picture. And um, let's see here. I'm going to select this uh, wheel. And um, I'm going to, I could put it over the whole thing, but I'm just going to put it over this rusty bit right here. And I'm going to select uh, the front here, uh, these little bits. And I'm going to uh, position this over top of these uh, bolts right here. When I'm done with that, um, let's see, I think I might actually add in the next spring here. So I'm going to, uh, oops, I'm going to slide this over just a little bit and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and then drag this to the middle and it will merge into one spring. And then I'm going to select these and uh, make sure they have a little bit more room. And that looks a lot better actually. Okay. Um, I might add in a few little more things here and then we can move on to the train car like uh, this is looking pretty good But I think the wheel is just too much too much rust. So I'm gonna select these outer bits here and I'm going to uh, Do uh, I'm gonna reproject them by doing U cube project and I'm going to just uh, position this over um, Some other bit of our texture here so that we have slightly different color Okay I'm going to hop back to the shader editor and I'm going to do some quick uh, shading work here. Um, for instance, uh, this is metal, so I'm going to turn up the metallic here. And then um, I'm going to plug the specular into our texture. And I'm also going to plug the uh, normal into our texture. And I'm going to add in a bump map and plug it into the normal and plug the texture into the height. And I'm going to bring down the strength and press invert and just make it very subtle. Perfect. All right, now we have some nice looking wheels. So I'm gonna just move this one over here and I'm gonna press uh, Alt D to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna invert the setting here so it's on the other side. So I'm gonna start making the train car now. So how I did this, uh, I brought in a little person for scale to make sure we're on point. Then I added in a cube and uh, in edit mode, I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier where I quarter off the sections and select all but one and then I'm going to add in a mirror modifier and turn it on for the X and Y and I'm going to drag the cube out so that it's long and uh, I, I thought the wheels are a little too far apart so I decided to just bring them in just a little bit to make the train more of a, a realistic length here. And uh, okay, now we can kind of get to work. And uh, again, this is not to real world uh, proportions or settings. So um, 
just be aware of that going into this, that you might need to tweak some stuff if you're trying to make an absolutely photorealistic train. So one thing that is going to be important here is uh, making sure it's wide enough and also tall enough because people have to be able to be in this train, be able to stand up and be able to sit in rows of two probably on this train. I decided to add an edge loop about a quarter of the way uh, up the side of the car here so I could pull out this side to give it kind of a uh, tapered aerodynamic feel. And uh, yeah, that's looking kind of nice right there. And again, I'm going to add in another uh, armature basic person for scale because if a person's sitting up here, like there should be enough room for their head and for them to be standing and sitting. So once you got the basic shape how you want it, uh, usually I add an edge loop in the middle here and then I up the number a lot. And I'm going to do a door on each end and then windows in between. So uh, here I'm going to add in another edge loop on this side. And then I am going to uh, add in another edge loop kind of up here for the top of the window and another one down here for the bottom of the window. And in retrospect, I made my windows a bit too high. So you might want to make yours a bit lower because they should be a bit lower than the doors. But I'm going to select all these. And I'm going to double tap I to inset all these faces separately. So now these are going to be the windows, basically. And then you can Alt-E, extrude along normals, and give them a bit of an inset. And then I'm going to select these faces here. And I'm going to double tap I again so I can inset all of them at once. And I'm going to Alt-E, extrude along normals to kind of make a little door. And I'm going to select this face. I'm going to I to inset. I'm going to scale it in a bit. And then Alt-E, extrude it again to make a little window for the door. Perfect. And with this kind of stuff, I really advise not going too detail heavy uh, before you're done, but it's okay to add in a few bevels, maybe on the top and along the side here, uh, just to kind of smooth things out to see how it's going to look. But just don't add bevels on every single door and window yet, because it's going to just kind of screw you later. I went through and I selected all these faces on the bottom and I double tapped I to inset them separately and then I extruded them down a bit, inset them again and extruded them in just to make some, I don't know, little uh, underside details. And I'm going to create kind of a uh, bridge between the cars back here and I'm going to add in an edge loop and I'm going to press S X zero to straighten it. And then I'm going to select uh, all these faces here and then I'm going to uh, extrude out just a little bit and to kind of create like a one of those you know the like uh the things in between the trains yeah okay and i'm gonna bevel this uh top just a little bit here i'm gonna select the sides back here like these bigger pieces and i'm gonna inset them a little bit like that and i'm gonna alt e to extrude them back into the train i'm gonna do the same up here and because I, I think it just adds a nice little bit of geometry and i think that looks kind of good okay i'm gonna hop into the uh shader editor and I'm going to drag in a picture of a train that looks like this. And I'm going to plug that into the base material. Once this is in, I'm going to switch over to the UV editor. And I'm going to start unwrapping bits of this train and using this existing train uh, texture to uh, kind of uh, inform that. So I'm going to select all these windows first. I'm going to make a new texture and name this window. And uh, I'm going to just give this its own uh, kind of color and maybe make the windows a little bit rough. And I'm going to uh, assign this to the windows on this train. Okay, and then with that out of the way, I'm going to select, I think first, um, I'm going to select, let's see. Let's select this bottom chunk here, like the part below the windows. And um, yeah, and I'm going to do that on the other side here too. And um, I'm going to start by unwrapping these first. And if you're anything like me, you may be having some trouble selecting things, but that is OK. OK, um, I'm going to press U and then Q projection. And I got the whole bit here. And you can see it's unwrapped. And I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to line it up on the door, I think, so we can get some of this like pure like metal color. Then I'm going to select uh, these bits around the windows. And you can use Alt click to uh, select edge loops while pressing shift, of course. And um, I'm going to UQ project these and I'm going to line this up. I think I'm going to line this up on the color right here. Yeah, okay. That's kind of cool. 
again my windows are too high so it looks kind of comical but that's okay because this is just a tutorial so I'm gonna select this door I'm gonna uh, unwrap it I'm going to um, let's see I'm gonna put this also on the door maybe down below here kind of like that and I realized I didn't do the door frame so I'm gonna alt click to uh, select the loop and then Q project and I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna just line it up up here perfect I'm gonna select this uh, I'm gonna select the roof so I'm gonna just uh, go through and circle select everything and I think I'm gonna do it two different parts here I'm gonna Q project I'm gonna select this uh, rounded bit and this is going to go um, this is gonna go on the door as well for that nice smooth metal and I'm gonna select the other part here and this is going to go on the um, on this metal texture here so we got kind of a bump uh, texture for the roof perfect I'm gonna select this back kind of slinky bit I, I don't know what to call this but I'm gonna cube project it and I'm going to um, I'm going oops I'm going to uh, align it all so it's on the same orientation I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna line it up between the two train cars here so that we get some of that same texture and that looks uh, pretty good right around there Okay, so um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to continue working on the back of this train in a little bit. But um, I think for right now, I might actually go back in and start beveling some of these uh, edges. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to select these uh, edges here. And I'm going to just uh, save you some time, which I wasted actually on mine because I tried to select the whole uh, edge and then that happened. So I had to go back through and deselect a lot of these edges. And I basically what ended up happening is uh, it kept messing up. So it, basically the only thing you should have selected is the uh, corner that you want beveled. So make sure everything else is deselected aside from the specific corner. So when I tried to bevel it, uh, you'll see that the edges are kind of intersecting a lot here. So um, I'm going to go and I'm going to change the bevel type to percent and I'm going to try and bevel again. And now I should have a little bit more leeway of how far I can bevel. Um, all right, that looks okay right there, and um, cool. Uh, I think we can move on from that. I uh, let's let's fix the back now. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna select these uh, faces here, and I'm gonna cube project them, and I'm gonna line them up on the door again because I want this nice smooth metal. And then uh, once I got all that uh, lined up, I'm gonna continue on from there. Okay, so I'm gonna select uh, these outer faces here and I'm gonna continue using the shift alt click to uh, circle select different faces. And um, I'm gonna cube project these and line them up again. And okay, uh, once that's done, I, I think that's looking kind of cool, but I wanna add, I think this is too much blue. So I'm gonna wanna add a little bit more color uh, here. So I'm gonna add in a loop cut along the train here and um, let's see, yeah, well, I'm gonna add a loop cut uh, right through the middle here, and then I'm going to select uh, all these faces here, and um, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna just U, Q, project them, and I'm gonna just uh, shrink this down, and I'm gonna move it uh, onto one of these red bands here so that you get this nice red stripe. Cool. A lot of trains also have kind of a red warning line along the bottom. So I'm going to select all these uh, edges and press E to extrude and drag this down. And I'm going to select this. Uh, I'm going to select this edge of faces here. And I'm going to U Q project and I'm going to line this up uh, down here with this red line. So now we've got this uh, red strip that goes along the bottom. Awesome. Now uh, we can add in some more like little details now if we want like air vents and stuff like that. Again, uh, <laughs> my windows are comically high, so you're gonna want to make yours a lot lower than this. But this for a, you know, this is basically how I do it. I'm gonna add in a loop cut here, and I'm going to add uh, I'm gonna add an event here. So I'm gonna press I to inset, and then Alt E to extrude this in, and I'm gonna U Q project this. I'm gonna shrink it down. I'm gonna place it on the actual vent that is in this texture here. And now we've got a little vent on the side of our train. I advise adding a bunch of these in because it really, really helps with realism. And I think I might make some little panels all along the uh, side here to kind of break up the monotony. So uh, just 
double click I so you can inset all the faces separately and then you can just give them little insets so that way it feels less like one solid chunk of metal and more like uh, it's built out of actual materials. Over in the shader editor, I'm going to uh, drag the specular into our texture here, and I'm going to turn up the metallic. All right, that's looking a little bit better. And I'm going to drag the normal up into our texture, and I'm going to add in a bump. And if you haven't figured it out, it's just a complete copy of what we did for the wheels. And that is way too much, so I'm going to turn that down and press invert, and make sure the texture is plugged into the height. All right, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to also maybe plug the roughness in here too as well. I'm going to press uh, Shade Smooth here, but since it looks terrible, I'm going to go to the Object Data Properties, and under Normals, I'm going to check Auto Smooth. Now I'm going to go over to the Window Material. I'm going to delete the Principled Shader, and I'm going to add in a Mix Shader, and I'm going to plug a Glossy and a Transparent Shader into that. Once you get these plugged in, you're not really going to notice any difference, but that's okay, because we're going to fix that. I'm going to uh, first make the glossy a little bit more, uh, I'm going to turn it down so it's a bit more reflective, and then I'm going to go over into the settings for the uh, material, and under, uh, under settings, I'm going to change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. Now we should be able to uh, see through the window. Perfect. Okay, and this is pretty much everything, like everything else here is just little details you can add on your own. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and figure out this back part because I messed up earlier and I beveled too soon, so um, I can't inset it because it's insetting the whole thing, so that won't work. The workaround I found is you can just delete all these faces here, and uh, then you can delete this um, middle face here, and then you can select the whole uh, loop here, and then Alt E extrude along normals and extrude it in a little bit, and obviously you can clean it up more later, but for this purpose it'll be fine I'm gonna fill this face here and then these uh, this part here is a little bit crooked so I'm gonna select all these edges and just press uh, S X 0 to straighten this face here and I'm gonna do the same on this side here S X 0 to straighten it out cool uh, now it's just a blank slate so I'm gonna go to the UV editor and I'm going to line it up with the door again. So I'm going to press U, uh, Q projection, and I'm going to just line it up. And in this case, I'm not even going to make a window because I'm a little bit lazy. So I'm just going to make it look like a window. It's OK. It's really big. Uh, you can make it more detailed if you want later. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. And that's basically how I made the trains. Like everything, I just kept adding on and adding on and adding on over months and months and working on making the textures more realistic. And that's basically how I got my results. But yeah, it basically started like something like that and it evolved from there. And then you can add in seats and stuff inside when you want. But uh, yeah, that's how I did it. And I hope this was helpful.